grace and peace and good morning to you and welcome to fire in the morning we praise the lord on today it is wednesday and this is the day that the lord has made and we are already rejoicing and we are glad in it we are coming together this morning to stoke our fires for the lord to get the word for the day to get our heart ready for whatever is ahead for today. Amen. And just to seek the Lord and just be prepared and rest in his presence. If you have your Bibles, let's go to the word of God. We want to go quickly to the scripture on this morning. Hallelujah. Well, I'm praying that you're getting your Bible and that you're reading along as we are getting into the word amen again and i just want to take a moment to just thank god for all of our listeners i want to thank you for your messages thank you for letting me know that you are listening and and that if the program is having difficulty or if we're traveling or something happens and you miss a program that it matters to you that you miss a program with us and so i just want to thank you for your support Thank you for chiming in and letting me know, amen, that these morning fires, amen, this fire in the morning is blessing you and encouraging you, amen, and is adding to your day. That is a great encouragement. And so we thank God for that. And I thank God for you. Amen. Let's go to the word of God. We're going to Matthew chapter six. Amen. Matthew, the sixth chapter. And we are going to look at verse six. I'm going to start at verse 5 first. That's what we'll do. Matthew chapter 6. And we'll start at verse 5. And it says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the street, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, Pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Hallelujah. Amen. And this morning I want to encourage you and 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 speak to you this morning about the call to solitude, to the place of solitude. Amen. And I'm not talking about being in solitary confinement, being on lockdown. But I'm talking about this place that Jesus is speaking of here in the verse, uh, verse six of the sixth chapter of Matthew, where he is speaking about coming away from everything, shutting everything else out, getting rid of your schedule, your timer, your alarm clocks, your, your Facebook, your whatever you're doing and shutting all of that stuff down. So that you can come away with him. Amen. He's having a difficulty with the the Pharisees. And he's talking about, you know, he's telling the disciples, listen, I don't want you to be like the hypocrites. I don't want you to get out here and pray and pray for show. And a lot of people do that. They want to be seen. They want to be heard. They want to pray the loudest. They want to pray in tongues the longest. Amen. They want to do all of their service unto the Lord in public but he's not talking about public ministry right now here he's saying in verse 6 but you that's what they do but you they get out in front and want to be seen but you when you come to me when you come into my presence what he's saying what I want you to do is I want you to enter into your closet get in the place of solitude And this place of prayer, every believer, uh, you know, the Hebrew people, what they did was they all had prayer chambers on the first floor of their homes. And they designated that place for prayer. It was always on the first floor. And that room was always to be able to go in and to seek the Lord. And so when he's saying closet, he's not talking about a literal closet. But this room was small, 
like a closet. It's a secret place. It's not a common space where everybody's sitting around and talking and laughing and doing whatever. But he's talking about getting into a solitary place. And he said, when you have shut the door, shutting the door, amen, is symbolic of shutting out everything else that is around you. And again, this is the mindset. Amen. That there was a, you know, there's a secret chamber that you need to be able to go to. The place that you go into in prayer to go in and seek the Lord. Amen. That every day, daily, that you enter into that room, that you shut out all of the clamor of life and all of the distractions and you enter in to your heart. Go into your heart, the place, that secret place in you. Amen. In prayer. Amen. And this is where God wants to fellowship with you. Enter into that place, amen, where only you and God are. And you come away, get away from all the clamor. I mean, turn your phone off. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I know that we get all of these notifications. We get messages. We get text messages. We get emails. We get, you know, all kind of stuff that we have coming to our phone, our our, uh, you know, phone is ringing and it's, it's taxing, you know, and I often used to say, even to my kids when they were growing up, you know, that they were overstimulated. It was always something you just got to be buzzing, got to be going, got to be, you know, and if you didn't have something to do, you'd be bored. And so I think that the same thing is, is happening with us as believers. We are overstimulated and it's wearing us out. And you know why you're getting worn out? You're getting worn out because you haven't been in that secret place. You haven't been in that place of quiet. You haven't been in that place where you shut out all the clamor, shut out all the noise, shut down all of the ringing, the dinging, the pinging, the, the announcements, the, the notifications, and just went into that place in your heart where it's you and God, where you can fellowship, where you can commune, this secret chamber that is in the house on the first floor of every Hebrew home, you know what I'm saying, this secret place where they would come away and be with God, this is what the Lord is saying, find you a place, find you a place, and it doesn't always have to be a closet, it doesn't always have to be in the sanctuary at the church, you can go in the bathroom and close the door, and just go in there and get in the presence of God, but the point is that you are away from being distracted, you are away from people pulling on you, tugging on you, doing the norm, you know what I'm saying, amen, talking to you, but there's nothing going on except you and God speaking to each other, amen, and so when he's talking about this solitary place, he's not talking about being lonely, he's talking about getting in a place where you are alone we understand that loneliness is something altogether different loneliness speaks about you know that heart-wrenching um uh, um you know disease that's as a social disease but it's you know that heart-wrenching social disease that denotes living in abandoned states or being unwanted or being unloved that's not what he's talking about he's talking about being alone not loneliness alone being in a solitary place quiet place a still place amen a place where you're not doing a whole bunch of hustle and bustle and there's not a whole bunch of stimuli from the outside it's just you and God and and to know that God is desiring this he's saying when you pray I need you to enter into that secret closet, enter that closet and shut the door, shut out everything else, turn everything off. It's about you and God. And when God sees you in secret, he's going to reward you openly. Amen. This is the place to be empowered. This is the place to receive impartation. This is the place to, amen, receive the peace of God downloaded into your spirit, man. This is the place, amen, where God settles you, amen, and, and, and calms you, amen, it calms your inner storms and all the things that has been going on that have been, been, uh, stressing you and pressing you amen and, and wearing you out this is the place that you go that god strengthens and encourages you and pour back pours back into you so that you can go a little further 
This is the solitary place. It's not just a place for you to go get anointed. Amen. Yes, you go there and you get anointed. But it's a place of fellowship. Do you understand that the Father wants to fellowship with you? Do you understand that there are things that he wants to share from his heart to your heart when you commune with him? Do you understand that he longs to love on you? He longs to share his secrets with you. He longs to be able to strengthen you and empower you and pour into you and love on you. Amen. And be with you. Amen. This is the place that he's calling us to. This secret place, the call to solitude, the call to quiet and calm, you know, and I know sometimes it's easy for us to get stressed out because there's so many things that are demanding our time, so many things on our schedule, we got 5 million things on our schedule, you know what I'm saying, and we run ourselves, we burn the candle at both ends, you know, and then we don't understand why we're worn out, why is our spirit man depleted, but I wanted to be able to tell you that this is the place where you are invigorated, where you are exhilarated, where you are soothed in your spirit hallelujah where there's a cleansing there's a peace that comes over you there's a place amen this is a place of being renewed this is a place of calm in the presence of the lord this is where god gives you vitality amen it gives you enthusiasm in the spirit amen it pours into you and causes you to be strengthened hallelujah and causes you amen to be rejuvenated all over again in your inner man it's the place where you unwind and let go of all of everything that has been all over your back all over your mind all over your spirit wearing you out tearing on you you know why you're stressed out you know why amen you can't amen think straight you know why you you you're feeling like you're all worn and you don't know you know you just beat up and tore down because you got to get to this place of solitude you got to get to this place amen in the secret place so that god amen can 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 pour him himself over you Pour his spirit over you so that he can wash over you, amen, with his presence and strengthen and encourage you. Amen. I want to read to you that even um, even how Jesus handled his, his own time with the Father. Go to Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14, amen. And we're going to look at verse, let's see, verse 13. This is after John the Baptist dies. Verse 13 says, When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place. Apart. You hear that word? Apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. Listen, he was distressed over the death of John. John the Baptist is gone. The one who heralded his coming. The one who prepared the way for him to come forth dies and after that hallelujah amen verse 13 says that jesus when he heard of it he said i gotta get away and get into the presence of god how do i deal with grief how do i deal with things that pull on my heart how do i deal with amen things amen that seem to just wear on me how do i deal with you know things so that i have the right response you know how you get the right response you get in the presence of the Lord. You don't have to respond right away. Amen. You could just get in the presence of the Lord and let God give you the right response. I want to look at this word apart. Amen. In, in verse 13, it says, and when Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place, a part. And when the people heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. Amen. He went to the desert place. It wasn't just enough to go to a desert place. It wasn't just enough to go, amen, to a place where there was nothing out there. Amen. But it, it, the scripture is painting a picture so that you understand, amen, that he was not just, <coughs> amen, getting into a place, um, excuse me, where he was going out into a dry land, amen, in the middle of nowhere. It wasn't just that. Hallelujah. This word apart is chanak. Amen. It is to initiate, to teach, to dedicate, to consecrate, to inaugurate. Amen. And so this word 
this word, amen, is a place of training. Amen. That's what this is. That Jesus went to a place of training. He went to a place, amen, that was not just of training, but a, a dedicated place, a consecrated place, which meant that this was the place where God dealt with him. This was the place where God poured into him, that where God did, amen, his preparation for what Jesus had to do. This is where he went to get his downloads. This tells me that this is not a place that he had just went one time, but this was a consecrated place, hallelujah, that he went to so that he could talk to God, so that God could minister to him, so that God could, amen, prepare him for what he needed to do. Because right after this, Jesus feeds the 5,000. But this was a place of training. He went to a place where God could pour into him and teach him and speak to him. Amen. And, and, and impart into him. Hallelujah. Amen. And this was a consecrated and dedicated place. Do you have a consecrated place? Do you have a dedicated place that this is what I do here? When I get to this place, if I could just get to that place, I know what I'm going to do when I get there. I'm going to pray. I'm going to seek the Lord. This is where the Lord trains me. This is where the Lord trains my spirit. Hallelujah. This is where, amen, this is where the Lord disciplines my flesh. This is where the Lord speaks to me and pours into me, amen, and strengthens, hallelujah, and causes my spirit to be, amen, exhilarated by the presence of God. Amen. This is what that place was for Jesus. Amen. And this is what we have to do. Because when we're saying that we're following Jesus, that means that we're following him into the secret place. That means that we are imitating him in his life of prayer. This life of prayer that he had, we need to have. Amen. Even this same verse is, is, is repeated in Mark chapter 1, verse 35. It says that he departed to a solitary place. And I want to read that just because I just want to I just want to say it in your hearing. Mark chapter 1. Let me just read that out loud to you. Amen. Mark 1 and verse 35. Amen. And it says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day. This means everybody else was still sleeping. Come on, get out that bed. Shake yourself out of that bed. It's time for fire in the morning. It's time for you to get into the presence of the Lord. It's time for you, amen, to prepare yourself for your day. This says that Jesus got up a great while before day and he went out. So he got up in the morning, rising up a great while before day. He went out and departed into a solitary place and there he prayed. He set the record. He set the bar. He set the example for us. Get up. The sun may not be up yet. The sun is not out, but get in the presence of God. Go to this solitary place, place because he knew that once the day got started, it was going to be hard to find that solitary place. He knew that once, amen, hallelujah, that sun came up and he got into his day, there were going to be people pulling on his coattail. There were going to be people, amen, that were going to be looking to be able to receive from him. There were going to be people who wanted healing, people who wanted counseling, people who wanted deliverance, somebody who just wanted to sit in his presence and just be around him. But before he was ready to pour into the people or pour out to the people he had to go to the presence of the father in his solitary place before everybody else got up before the day got stirring before anybody started pulling on him so that God can pour into him so he would have something to pour out to others do you see the pattern in scripture can you hear the call to the place of solitude can you hear God saying to you, slow it down, shut it down, come away with me, come and get in my presence. Let me speak to you. Let me pour into you. Let me strengthen you for what's ahead of you. That's the purpose of fire in the morning, that we come together and prepare our hearts and be poured into so that God can be with us as we go out into our day so we need this spiritual solitude amen we need this solitude why because it causes us amen when we talk about our hearts being invigorated and our hearts being amen being being calmed and being renewed and and us being able to unwind amen and being stimulated in the spirit amen and receiving vitality amen in our spirit 
This is the place where we fall in love with Jesus again. This is the place, amen, where we remember how much he, he means to us and how much we love him. Hallelujah. And it only comes from us being still and fellowshipping with him. If you want your love turned on again, you want your love, amen, for God to be stirred up, get to the solitary place. You want to be stirred up in your inner, inner man and you want, amen, to, to revisit that place where just the mention of his name brought tears to your eyes. Get to that solitary place because I'm telling you, this is where God is calling us to. We need to get to the place where there's the absence of noise, the absence of, of, of stimulation, the absence of Amen. Of everything that is pulling and tugging and speaking to you just so that you can hear what God is saying. This place of solitude, amen, is the place where we condition our hearts to depend on God for everything. That's the place that we want to be in. This is where, amen, we detach. Come on, can you say that? Detach from this world just for a little bit. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And and we 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 pull away from all of the unreal uh 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 um uh, uh, expectations that everybody else has on us. Amen. And we 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 thirst for God. We get in his presence and he pours into us and he quenches our thirst and he feeds us and he strengthens us and he he gives us his peace. This is the place this is the call to solitude. Get there today. This is the will of God for you. Amen. And I promise you, beloved, if you get there, it's going to alleviate your stress, your strain, your pressures, the things, the hustle and bustle, the wearing out, the burning the candle on both ends. I promise you, you're going to be exhilarated in your love for God and in your spirit man in Jesus name let's pray father I thank you God for your people I thank you for this call to the solitary place and I pray for every person under the sound of my voice and I pray God that you stir our hearts that we will do even as you did Jesus here in Mark chapter 1 verse 35 that we will get up and rise up early in the morning a great while before it is day so that we can get in to a solitary place and be there in prayer so that we can experience your presence so that our love will be turned on again so that our hearts will be stirred again will you give us oh god even as it says in the song of solomon dove's eyes where we have eyes for nobody else but you and god i thank you for stirring our hearts today i thank you oh god for causing us to long for you to love on you to press into your presence to get into this quiet place to detach from this world to get in the place where there's the absence of noise and there's no other voices in our ears ringing except yours. And I thank you, God, for causing each one of us to press into the place of solitude, this secret place, this quiet place, this solitary place where you and we can meet alone and you can pour in your secrets pour in your love and wash over us with your love and god we thank you and we praise you and we give you glory and we rebuke every hindrance that would stand in the way to the solitary place everything that it was, would obstruct us getting to solitude we we plead the blood right now we curse the works of the enemy right now and we declare that nothing will keep us out of your presence that nothing will prevent us from getting close to you that nothing will keep us from this call to solitude in Jesus name and we bless you and we honor you and we thank you that it's not a chore but it's the place of love it's the place of the peace of God it's the place where you can love on us and we can love back on you we thank you for this so right now we give you glory and we give you honor and we magnify you for it right now father and we bless you and we thank you, God. We honor you. We give you praise. Hallelujah for the solitary place. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, saints of God, we thank God for you. We appreciate the Lord. Hallelujah for this day. And if you have not had, aside from this, you have not had your time with God, the sun is not up. 
it's still time before the day comes to get in his presence. Thank God for you. God bless you. Meet us again tomorrow morning where we stoke our fires with fire in the morning, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday. God bless you. Have a blessed day.
one, nor three us, that they will know the truth of who you are. Jesus, that within a group that is so marginalized by fear and hurt, Lord, that you will pour out your love, God, that you will raise up a generation where Revelation 12, 11 becomes a reality. A generation that can conquer by your blood and the words of their testimony, that they do not love their lives unto death, God. Raise up a generation who are not afraid to shine your light in North Korea, Jesus. Overflow your love on the Christians that will go in there so that the only outcome is an unexplainable power and grace, Jesus. Strengthen and raise up a generation of Stevens, where your glory and peace fall upon them. Lord, in your name there is no darkness, Jesus, so I just pray that you send people, God, that don't love their lives unto death, that will go to North Korea, God, and shine your light, Jesus, because even in North Korea, you are there, your light shines, God, so I just pray that, God. That through your blood, the hearts of these evil men can be changed. It is your truth that can spark a light, being the first step to create a wild forest fire. You have a longing in their hearts that is getting ready to be warmed and heated, causing a chemical reaction, Jesus, that cannot be reversed, Jesus. Chemical reactions cannot be reversed, God. So I just pray that you will bubble up an outpour of your spirit. In the name of Jesus, set a fire within the lives of people in North Korea that will result in a boiling outpour of the Holy Spirit. Your gospel with God. We 